Casey Gray here from The Conscious Builder, and on today's video, I'm gonna get into why bump outs and balconies cause complexities for air sealing and insulation details. If you haven't already, hit subscribe, hit the bell button to get all the notifications for all the videos that we're releasing, including updates on the house that you see behind me, which is a 3,000 square foot net zero home that we're building. So let's get into today's video. All right, so where I'm standing right now is actually going to be an in-law suite, but what's above me is the master bedroom and the balcony off of the master bedroom. So this would be one of the complexities that we had to think through, is that for one, we wanna keep that balcony low. For example, when you're coming out of your master bedroom, you don't wanna have a big step up onto a balcony. You wanna kinda of just step out onto it from, from a de design perspective. But what that does is that it forces us to reduce the thickness of an area where we would like to have more R value for insulation because it's essentially a roof from the main floor. So in this case, we're gonna have to use spray foam to get that R value. But then the other complexity that we have to think about is the air barrier. We don't wanna rely on spray foam as the air barrier because as soon as that wood shrinks or moves or contracts, it could crack and then you have this all this air leakage. And it's hard to connect spray foam onto another material as an air barrier. So in this case, what we're doing is running the air barrier underneath it, but we got to connect it to the outside of the wall. We got to bring it under this, uh, under this balcony, and then we got to connect it again up to the exterior wall on the second floor, which I'll show you next. But these are all things that you need to think about during design and during construction. You can't just think about it at the air barrier stage or the vapor barrier, or the weather barrier stage, depending on what you're using as your air barrier, you have to think about it at framing stage because a lot of these barriers need to be transitioned while you're framing. So here's another area, this would be a bump out. So this is gonna be like their mud room and powder room and there's a bump out off of the front of the house, which looks great, right? But once again, you have to think about the complexities with having that bump out. Because we need to have that air barrier come down the exterior, because we're using the air barrier in the exterior of our wall assembly, and connect it into the main part of the house, or across this roof, and then back out to the outside of the wall. So what that does is that it forces us to do something for electrical. We don't want to penetrate our air barrier with all these electrical boxes. So when we have a light put in there, we need to think about that. So either we need to frame down the ceiling in the area, uh, or we just need to avoid lights, uh, or if we decide to put a light box in there, it's now a weak point, which we're trying to eliminate any penetrations through the air barrier. So once again, we're thinking about this during the framing stage, ahead of time during the design ultimately, uh, so that you understand what's involved. And these are all things that add complexities, which add cost to the build. This is the balcony going out from the master bedroom. And this is the step I was talking about. We need to keep this portion down from the finished floor inside if we don't want to have a step because we need to leave room to build a deck on top of this. This needs to be waterproof just like a flat roof would be. And then your deck needs to be framed on top of it. But the deck can't be screwed through that because you're not going to screw through your roof, obviously. So you need to leave room for sleepers or pedestals or whatever you're using for your decking product. So that needs to be thought through and that's why you lose your R value. And then this is our weather barrier and air barrier in this case, which we need to think about while we're framing or else this would be a weak point. If this wasn't here, you would have a weak point in your air barrier, obviously an issue with your weather barrier as well. But these are all things that need to be thought through ahead of time if you're going to hit that net zero or passive house, if you're going for passive house certification, for example, extremely important for air tightness. Net zero isn't as important in terms of air tightness, but we're always aiming to make our homes as airtight as possible. Glad you watched this video until the end. If you want to learn more about the difference between an air barrier and a vapor barrier, be sure to hit the link that's showing up in the video right now. And also, if you want to follow this net zero build, be sure to hit the subscribe button, be sure to hit the bell button so you get notifications, and always remember to live consciously.